This is question 46 from section B of the 2018 PBSAA paper. In this question we're told about the study of two lipase enzymes on the same type of lipid. We're told that one of the lipase enzymes was the product of a mutation of the other, the original gene that produced the other enzyme. And then we're given this graph which shows the results of the study. So as you can see, there appears to be a increase and then a plateau in the level of product, i.e. since we're talking about a lipid here, that would be fatty acids and glycerol, in the case of the original lipase, whereas the mutated lipase did not change the amount of product produced, and presumably that would mean that it was not having any activity breaking down that particular lipid. So bearing that in mind, we're told that the mutation occurred in a serine aspartic acid histidine region, so this is a sequence of three adjacent amino acids. And we're asked which of the following statements are correct. So let's look at our first statement. It says that the serine, aspartic acid, and histidine amino acids could be, excuse me, that should say in the active site. So they could be in the active site because there appears to be no activity between the enzyme and the solute that the enzyme is targeting, the reactant. So it could be because of a mutation which then affects one of these amino acids and therefore the active site can no longer bond to the solute. But of course there are a number of other reasons why a mutation in a particular region of a protein could have an impact that doesn't involve it being in the active site. For example, this could be at another region in the protein but the mutation may affect the three-dimensional structure such that the active site ends up being changed as well. But it could be in the active site, so we'll give that a tick. Moving on to statement two. All mutations affecting the region coding for serine, aspartic acid, and histidine will have the same effect. Well, the key word here is that all mutations will have the same effect. We know that there are many different types of mutations, addition, deletion, substitution, etc. So we certainly can't say with any certainty that all different types of mutation in the same region will have the same effect. Some, for example, might be a silent substitution mutation. Because of the de degeneracy of the uh, genetic code, you might have a situation where you change out one of the bases, but nonetheless, the, the new codon nonetheless codes for the original amino acid, because a number of different codons can code for the same amino acid. So we can say that's wrong. And the third statement is that at point Q, which is further along here, the pH of the reaction is higher than at point P. So point P is earlier in the reaction. Now since we're talking about a lipid, which is being broken down into its constituent parts, that would be fatty acid and glycerol, the fatty acid levels would increase as the lipid breaks down, and therefore the pH would be lower. So since there's an increase in acid levels, the pH at Q should be lower than it is at P, not higher. So we can say that based on what we've said, only statement one is correct, and therefore our answer to the question is going to be option B.